Hello and welcome to this rather unusual service of nine lessons and carols. Normally we would be filling the church with all the churches from Datchet. We would be welcoming different congregations together to celebrate the birth of Jesus in readings and in song. Instead, we have got an online service, but the spirit is still the same. This service has only been made possible through the immense efforts of all the churches, including Colmbrook Church. We have come together, we have compiled readings, and we have sung songs together. This evening, as we worship, as we celebrate the foretelling and the birth of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, let us recognise that through all the differences which we may have between our various Christian uh, uh, denominations, we are united through Christ together. And so whilst I am stuck in an empty and echoey church, we can come together through the readings in the Bible, through the carols and the hymns and anthems, we can come together and we can celebrate the birth of Christ. So I invite you to join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give thanks that you saw the love of us and thought it worthy to send your Son. We thank you that he was born to a virgin, that he came to be our Saviour. Help us to grow in faith and love. Help us always to be seeking to emulate him, to show kindness, care, compassion to all whom we deal with. As we join in with this service today, help us to grow in that love and faith in you. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We will have our first hymn in the bleak midwinter.
We'll now listen to our first choral piece, The Coventry Carol. <laughs> A reading from the book of Genesis. The man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit of the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals. 
you will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust uh, all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. This is the word of the Lord. We'll now listen to our next anthem, All This Time. A reading from the book of Genesis. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies and through your offspring all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll now have our next hymn, Long Ago Prophets New.
A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll now have our next hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. reading from the prophet Isaiah. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse, from his roots 
a branch will bear fruit. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the Spirit of counsel and of power, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes, or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy, with justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, with the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt, and faithfulness the sash round his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw, like the ox. The infant will play near the hole of the cobra, and the young child put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll now have our next anthem, Zion Hears the Watchmen's Voices. <laughs>
A reading from the Gospel of Luke. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great, and you will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she, who was said to be a barren, is in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll have our next anthem, A Maiden Most Gentle. We're now going to sing our next carol, Once in Royal David City. This is one of several special carols has, which has been recorded for this service. My thanks to all the children, young people and other voices who are singing these carols, to Sue Piggott and Pete Harris and for Andrew Piggott for recording, for mixing and for playing the organ. Once in Royal David City.
A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfil what the Lord has said through the prophets. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to sing our next carol, Away in a Manger. This is one of our specially recorded carols sung by the young people and members of the church from Datchet and Colnbrook. Away in a Manger. from the Gospel of Luke. There were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David a Saviour has been born to you. He is Christ, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. 
So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll now listen to our next anthem. This is the truth sent from above. It's good to have had all of these familiar carols and uh, to have sung and heard the Christmas story, even under these rather different circumstances that we're stuck with at the present. I hope you're surviving all of the lockdown and the restrictions. Uh, we're looking forward to a bit of a different Christmas, aren't we? Things are not going to be the way that they've been. The uh, amount of things we're able to do are going to be limited and maybe we're being forced into a new simplicity. I wonder if that's really such a bad thing. In the midst of it all, what these songs and these readings have told us is the heart of the story. what's at the root of it all and it's not some it's not some simple emotional 
Oh, how nice story. This is a real difficulty and struggle all these people are going through. That this child might be born who has such significance for our world and our history. This child born here and now becomes the person around which all of our later history is dated and defined and held. I'm going to just reread the last bit of that um, reading from Luke 2 about the shepherds. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they'd seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said. But Mary treasured up all these things in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they'd heard and seen, which were just as they'd been told. The shepherds' response to the news was not a shrug of the shoulders and a get on with the, the, the cooking, or making sure that the sheep are safe, or keeping the fire burning. Instead, their response is to hurry off and check it out. And that's the first thing for us this different Christmas. I wonder if there are things that the glitter and the glamour and the presents and the food and the family have hidden from our lives. Maybe, maybe if we hurried off and looked, we'd find the baby and what that baby means to us and to the world. For those who have found that baby and discovered who he is and found the life that he brings to the human heart, they, like Mary, treasure him and all the news about him in their hearts. Our world is a deeply cynical place and part of that cynicism has been around the Christian story and people have been put off by all the negativity. But for those who find the baby and hear the message and treasure it, it becomes something that changes and transforms who they are and brings them to a new place, new life, new focus. And in many ways a far healthier focus than a lot that this world offers us. And the end result for the shepherds was that they wanted to tell everybody it was such good news and it just so took, them a, 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 took their breath away, the wonder of it, that exactly all the details that they'd been told to expect were there. However ridiculous and strange and odd they might be, this was what they'd been told and they found it just like that. And they became prophets, people who proclaimed out the message of God and said, you won't believe what we found. We found the one who is to come, the one who is to change the world, the, the Messiah. We've, we've seen him, he's just born us a baby, but he's come, he's come. Good news, good news. And in the midst of our quieter Christmas, our different Christmas, maybe our less harried Christmas, May there be time and space 
for you to find the baby and find who he truly, really is. Because it was just as they had been told. And I say to you that that's what I've discovered, that the Christian story works and lives and changes just as we'd been told. I encourage you to find this amazing precious gift this Christmas. Thank you Robin. We will now have our next hymn, The First Noel.
A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied. For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rules, rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, Report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Watchful at all times. Let us pray for strength to stand with confidence before our Maker and Redeemer, that God may bring in his kingdom with justice and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That God may establish among the nations his scepter of righteousness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may seek Christ in the scriptures and recognise him in the breaking of the bread. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That God may bind up the brokenhearted, restore the sick, and raise up all who have fallen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the light of God's coming may dawn on all who live in darkness and the shadow of death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That with all the saints in light we may shine forth as lights for the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of our Heavenly Father. Almighty God, as your blessed Son, Jesus Christ, first came to seek and to save the lost. So may, so may he come again to find us in the completion of his redeeming work. For he is now alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. As we look for the coming of the kingdom, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We're now going to have our next carol, Of the Father's Heart Begotten.
reading from the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and be made his dwelling amongst us. He has, we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're now going to sing our next carol, O Come All Ye Faithful, another specially recorded carol just for this service.
So I'd like to once again thank all those who have contributed to this service of nine lessons and carols. As we prepare for Christmas week, as we look forward to Midnight Mass, to Christmas Day, we pray for ourselves, for each other, for our families and our friends we may not be able to see this year. And so we look to Christ to draw us together. And though we be separated, we be united through him. So we'll have a short prayer and final blessing. Heavenly Father, you sent your servant Mary and her spouse Joseph to go to Bethlehem for the birth of, their, for, of her child, your son, our saviour, Jesus Christ. We pray for our families and our friends this day. We pray for all those who we love, who we are uh, unable to see. And we pray for those who have gone ahead of us to join with you. Lord, keep them safe. Embrace them in your loving arms. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Be amongst us and remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. We're now going to sing our final carol, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. <laughs>